Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about how by producing uh, crosses we can find how many uh, genes uh, contribute to the trait or control the trait. And here's a problem. Two strains of wheat were compared for the time required to mature and strain X required 14 days and strain Y required 28 days. The strains were crossed and the F1 generation was selfed. And uh, 100 F2 progeny out of 6,200,000 matured in 14 days or less. How many genes may be involved in maturation? And this is not uh, the first video that I am doing about how to find uh, uh, number of genes controlling the trait. So if you know how to solve the problem, I recommend you to stop video here, try to solve this problem on your own, and when you would be ready, you can run video again and you can compare your answer with my answer and explanation. So first of all, uh, here we have uh, two extreme um, genotypes. And for example, if we would have only one allelic pair, we can say that we have one parent that is homozygous dominant and another one that is homozygous recessive. And because this is additive traits, unlike in simple Mendelian genetics, where we have uh, in F1 generation all the heterozygous progeny, uh, that would be like uh, one of the parents that is here. So all would be heterozygous and would be the same phenotype as this parent. But, but when we talk about additive traits, uh, the picture would be different. For example, each uh, dominant allele would give two and uh, so value two and each recessive allele would give us a value of one. So as you see, this parent on the left uh, would give two, so it, its phenotype would be two, and uh, parent on the top phenotype would be four, and all the progeny would be uh, two and one, so all of them would be three. So, for example, if this is going to be uh, tallness or any other trait, and this parent would be 4 inches tall, this would be 2 inches tall, and uh, all the progeny would be 3 inches tall, so different from both the parents. But when we cross, so this is going to be F1 generation, but according to our problem, uh, we have to self F1 generation, and as you see, this is uniform genotype, so we have to cross uh, genotypes that is heterozygous with another heterozygous genotype. So this is uh, the only one variant that is possible. And we are going to get here homozygous dominant, heterozygous here, and homozygous recessive here. So as you see, 2 out of 4 would be extreme uh, genotypes just like their parents. So, 2 out of 4, and uh, 2 out of 4 are going to be uh, intermediate genotype. So, 1 half would be uh, extreme genotype, just like parents, and uh, 1 half would be a different genotype. So, this is just example when a trait under control of one gene. One gene that is uh, represented by two alleles. Dominant or just capital allele A and recessive allele A. So here we have two and one once again. And uh, here we would have uh, three, two and four genotypes and this is as I said additive trait and now we can solve our problem 
and in order to solve our problem we are going to use this formula and this is going to be one half raised n and raised two so according to our problem uh, we have 100 in F2 generation so this is uh, F2 generation so uh, 100 out of uh, 6 million 200,000 6 million 200,000 uh, that is going to be extreme uh, genotype like one of the parents and uh, as you remember in F1 generation we don't have extreme genotype this is going to be uniform uh, intermediate genotype between two extreme parents but in F2 generation uh, each allelic pair would produce different variants and imagine that uh, when we have two or three or four allelic pairs the number of variants uh, would grow progressively so according to our problem uh, here on the right side we have one half raised n and squared and with uh, next step we just have to find the number here so we have to divide 100 and we can cross these two zeros here and two zeros here so we have to divide 1 by 62,000 and what we are going to get is 0 0.00001 and this is going to equal one half n raised two. Now, what also we can do in order to get rid of this square, we have to take square root from both sides. And here on the left side, uh, we are going to get zero point zero zero. 401 that is going to equal to 1 half raised n so we just uh, eliminate this square and now we have to solve for n and what we are going to do uh, we have to find reciprocal of this number and what is a reciprocal and this is very easy for example imagine that we have 5 and what is the reciprocal of 5 and this is going to be 1 divided by 5 and we also can say that 5 is just a 5 divided by 1 so everything divided by 1 would be the same number and as you see this number is just uh, we just flip this number flip over and we got 1 divided by 5 and uh, 5 divided by 1 would be reciprocal of this number so these two numbers reciprocals of each other and for example reciprocal of 8 would be 1 8 and uh, we also can say that um, uh, reciprocal of 5 would be 0 0.2 this is the same numbers this is just a decimal number and this is fraction and also you have to know that when we multiply two reciprocals we always get one so five multiplied by one fifth would be one eight multiplied by one eighth would be one and five multiplied by zero point two would be one so when we multiply two reciprocals we always get one so we have to find now uh, the other reciprocal of this number so in order to do this we have to divide one by 0 0.00401 and the answer here would be 2 4 8 
0.99 or we can uh, round this number to 250 and uh, so what we would have here 250 that is going to equal to uh, 1 half raised n and uh, this is going to be uh, this is should be uh, two reciprocals so here we should get uh, 1 divided by 250 so we have to find value of n so when we uh, multiply one half by itself n times we should get uh, maybe not exactly this number but very close number and n would be 8. So if we multiply one half by itself 8 times we are going to get 1 divided by 256 and this is a closed number of 250 so n would equal to 8 and this is going to be our answer today so this trade under the control of 8 genes and each gene would be uh, allelic pair so would be represented in diploid organism with two alleles so total number would be 8 genes and uh, 16 alleles and this is all for today thank you for your attention please subscribe for my new videos that i post almost every day thumbs up if you like this video please write your comments questions if you have uh, any and see you in the next video goodbye